it's a story that's been uh, swept under the rug. Um, the Métis people were not allowed to live on the reserve because they weren't Indians and they were not seen as, well, call them white people, so they were not allowed to live in the town sites. They didn't want uh, half-breeds to come on their land at all, you know, be good little half-breeds, I guess, and stay, stay on your own side. There wasn't a whole lot of uh, love all around. To me, it was a good life. I didn't know any different. <laughs> There were six communities that were established in Saskatchewan as Métis Farms. At that time they, they had this idea of the, the white man's burden and you know all of that type of stuff. We'll send them down to Green Lake and they'll be out of our hair. They would have houses and they would have cattle and they would have farmland and they would have all of this. Life would be good for them if they would go there. They came with that message and then they came with the message that you're going there whether you want to or not. <laughs> This would be the equivalent of a reserve for many people. We were sitting on it. We were sitting in the coaches. We could name what house was burning, whose house was burning. Eh? And when my dad went and checked on his land, and he said, "Holy God!" You know, those guys would say, "Well, there's nothing here for you guys. You know, there's nothing here for you people." And when the welfare runs out, we, we're, we're doomed. They weren't together in a community the way that they had lived before. It had all changed. Now I think we have to go back and re-examine the historical uh, basis of who we are. They think it's all over. They think that uh, they, got away with, they got away with that. But that's the reason why I'm, I'm here to tell you what happened.